Hello, Toastmasters. Very welcome guests. Jim needed to escape. He was trapped on a small farm. He was going out of his mind. He was crazy. He needed to get out of this place. Even as a small child, he used to dream that aliens would come and adopt him just to take him away. He was just so bored. So he had to get away. He decided he was going to apply for a job overseas. He saw an advert for a job in Switzerland. The land of cheese, cows, Heidi, what's not to like. So he applied for the job, he interviewed for the job, all over the phone, of course, and he couldn't believe his luck. They gave him the job. He must have been desperate. So off he went. Flew into Switzerland. Started work a few days later. You know, new seat, new time, laptop, it's all looking good. He hadn't quite got his visa yet, they were sorting that out, but that was fine. So, there he was, Jim sitting down at work, one day. And he was a bit nervous, the people there were a little bit odd, because it was a different culture, he wasn't used to Swiss people. And his boss was really, really quite crazy, and just sort of put him on edge. And one day, she stormed into his office, like the little Napoleon that she was. She was about that tall, high heels, scarf, sunglasses up to here. She said, you'll have to leave, you must leave now. The authorities are coming. He had no visa, and the authorities were doing an inspection of the work. So, what did this mean for poor Jim? Well, Jim realized he was an illegal alien, and he had to leave. So, they kicked him across the border, over into France, where the company wouldn't get into trouble. But Jim wasn't quite legal there either, to be honest. <laughs> they found them this really rather bad sort of apartment hotel, and it stunk to high heaven of cheap, strong French cigarettes, and B.O. as well. He really hated that. But he worked away on his laptop and sent a few emails, it's, and that was okay, but he didn't really like it much. And then, ring ring, phone. Who the hell knows I'm here? This is boss. You must come in for an interview. It's a very important meeting. You must come in tomorrow. What was Jim to do? He couldn't, you know, he didn't have the visa. He couldn't go into Switzerland. Dressed in the suit and tie with his laptop. But what was he to do? He, he had to go in, otherwise he would have lost his job. So, fine. He plucked up the carriage, he put on his new suit, new tie, laptop bag, feeling the least like a tourist that anyone's ever felt, and walked to the border. His hotel was quite close to the border. Walking along, eyeing the border police. They were looking back at him. <laughs> and he managed to sneak through the border without getting stopped. And he managed to have the meeting and then sneak back. That was a bit lucky. Don't do that again. And he stayed on there for a few more weeks. And the weeks went into months. And he eventually found a place, a loft above this old retired couple. And luckily for him, for Jim, they could think a lot more about money than, than permanence. So he stayed there for quite some time. He bought a clapped out old French Renault car. He found himself a girlfriend. And occasionally he went across the border. But by then, he, he was getting quite comfortable because he kind of knew the borders where he could cross where there weren't any border police. And he was actually getting a, a little bit cocky. But fine, he kept on doing it. But eventually, he knew that one day, perhaps his luck might run out. And one day, it didn't happen. Jim was going to work, as always, the suit and the tie, laptop bag in the back of the seat. And he crossed the border from France into Switzerland. No problems. No police. 
cruising on the motorway, only about five, ten minutes away from work, suddenly, <coughs> bad noises started happening from the engine. Clunk, crash. <coughs> the car was revving uncontrollably. Jim took his foot off the pedal, but it only seemed to get worse. The car was revving, was screaming. He could barely hear himself think. And all of a sudden, the smoke started billowing from the car. He's just driving down the motorway, thinking, I've got to stop. So he pulled across into the lay-by. The car just wouldn't stop. It was just screaming. The engine was revving at maximum. And the smoke was billowing all across the motorway. There were cars that couldn't see through the smoke that was breaking the... You could hear the tires screaming. And Jim thought, oh, this is very, very bad. And in the end, bang! The radiator just burst, the engine just died. That was pretty bad for Jim. It was pretty bad. But he realised, I'm stuck here in the motorway, you know, sort of causing this huge kerfuffle. The police are going to be here. Any second, the Swiss police are going to show up. And I still don't have a permit. And I'm dressed to go to work. What am I going to say? And sure enough, a few minutes later, the police did turn up. These Swiss police, looking mean and nasty, four big burly guys, armed. And they pulled up to him, and they just stared at him while the engine of the motor kept on running. Jump, this is not odd. And after a bit, the driver wound down the window and said to Jim, you're in a lot of trouble here, I can see. Jump, oh, this is it, I'm a goner. I'm going to sit back to the farm. And the uh, Swiss policeman said, you should never have bought a French car. <laughs> <laughs> with that, they were off. And Jim finally made it to work. And a few weeks later, he finally got a visa. And in the end, Jim was no longer an illegal alien. <laughs>